Ah, Canada and Tim Hortons, they go hand in hand. From coast to coast, Canadians love drinking and eating their food. So I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna redesign their logo. Your logo won't be good. Oh, that was, that was uncalled for, it wasn't really nice, where was I? What I was saying is their logo, I'm gonna redo it. Hey Jonesy boy, what do you think of the new Timmy's logo? Ah, bud, she's a doozy, no thanks. And when I saw the logo, that's why I unsubscribed from it. And I thought, don't, don't talk to me. <sighs> All right, more coffee. I do what I don't. Let's go to Tim Hortons, baby. I'll get you double double. Huh? Oh, right, the logo. Nah. I'm going to bite your design method. Don't mess with Hortons. That, that beaver didn't even sound Canadian to me. Um, anyways, Tim Hortons, all over Canada. Every two blocks you'll find one. I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna recreate their logo. When I was young, the logo looked like this, classic retro. Then they moved to this look, and currently they're going with this look. Well, I'm gonna switch it up, make something new, let's go. Okay, everybody, so we are in Affinity Designer, and yes, I know, I usually do all my videos in Affinity Photo, but because we're creating a logo, I wanted to use Affinity Designer. This is a vector-based program, um, so anything you create, um, you could blow up to any size, whether it was on a business card or a bus, you would never lose quality using vector. If you don't know the difference between them, I got a video I'm gonna post down below. You could create something very similar in Affinity Photo, but you wouldn't be able to make it in vector quite like this. So uh, let's get started. The first thing I've done to make this, in my mind, this retro logo, I picked three colors, uh, a brown coffee kind of brown, a yellow and a red. Tim Hortons used to use brown a lot. Um, a little bit of yellow and some brown. So I've kind of mixed uh, the red, all new stuff in there. They're old and new to kind of combine it into something. And I've got this leaf I want to use as well. Now this leaf right now is a picture. It's just a, a PNG image um, that's pixel based. So what I want to do is create my own version of this. So it's a vector. So if it was to be blown up into any size, again, it wouldn't lose any quality. So considering I'm not the best drawer, I'm going to trace out this leaf using the pen tool. And the first thing I need to do is I need to create a new layer to start drawing on. Now in Affinity Designer, you have the option to add a pixel layer or add a layer. I'm gonna add a layer because I, it's gonna be uh, vector based. So I don't wanna add a pixel layer. So when I click on that, I get the um, layer up here. I'm just gonna name it trace. And the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my pen tool. So I'm gonna go over to my tools here. I'm gonna get my pen tool. I could also hit P on my keyboard. And I'm gonna go up to the very top here and the color of the pen right now is black and it has no stroke. So I'm gonna change that um, to a, just a, a regular line. I'm gonna make it two points. Doesn't matter what you really choose here. That's just what I'm gonna pick. And the next thing I'm gonna do here next to mode is I'm gonna pick pen mode, but I'm also gonna pick this option here, rubber band mode. And the reason I pick rubber band mode a lot is because it gives you, it, you can see your pen on the next step and I'll, I'll show you what I mean. I'm gonna zoom in here and start tracing this leaf. And the first point I make, as soon as I start drawing, you can see where the line is gonna go. So it kind of tells you like, hey, this is where your pen is and this is what it's gonna look like. So that's why I like using the pen tool. So a uh, pen tool with rubber band mode. And this exists in Affinity Photo as well. Um, I just like to use it here as well. So I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna do a quick trace of this. And then when I am back, we will start working on the next spot. Okay, so now I've got a outline of my leaf here. And if I turn off the original one in my layers panel here, if I turn this off, you will see I have the outline of this leaf. Now what I wanna do is I wanna fill this leaf red as well and get rid of the outline. So to do that, if I select my um, new layer here, my leaf that I've just traced, and I go up to the color tab up in the top right here, um, you'll see these two wheels here, these two circles. Now, same thing applies in Affinity Photo. The first one, the first circle, which is a bit lower, is your fill. So whatever color I choose for that will fill it, and the line behind it, the circle that's a little bit higher, is your outline, which is currently black. So I want this red in this leaf. So what I'm gonna do is I have the front circle selected. I'm gonna click on my color picker tool right here. I'm gonna click, hold, drag it over top of this red, let my mouse go. That's gonna load the color in my color picker tool. I'm gonna to click on that to assign it to my shape. Now that red is now inside the leaf and I'm gonna to go to the back circle, the higher one, which is the outline, and I'm gonna click this button to turn that off because I don't want that. So now I have my own leaf. I'll turn the original one back on, so they're very similar. Um, I have my own leaf, which is vector, which means it can be blown up to any size with no loss of quality. And to know it's vector, I'm gonna click on it. I'm gonna go over to my node tool right here. And you can see all these little nodes, these little points that pop up. So that is a vector leaf. So 
we got that part done. So moving on to the next part, I'm gonna use this brown for the background. So I'm gonna just basically, this is just a shape, a, a triangle. I'm gonna take it, pull it out all the way across. So that's gonna be my background. I'm gonna shrink this leaf down a little bit for now because I don't need it for the moment. And I'm gonna move these colors down to the bottom here. So to get started uh, for a basic, basic, um, retro look here is I had to find a font that looked cool to me and I wanted like coffee shop donut retro style um, and I found a font I will show you here in a second so I'm just going to type out Tim Hortons and I'm going to make the font white oops I'm going to make the fill white and the font I found was called Teenage Garde Demo and I like it because it's retro looking and it's uh, kind of really coffee shop looking which is kind of what I'm looking for so this is what our text is going to be like and what we're gonna do is now draw some lines um, using these yellows, reds, and another white color, or white as well. So all I'm gonna do is go over to my shape tool here and I'm gonna grab my rectangle. I'm just gonna click and drag out a line underneath Tim Hortons. I'm gonna make sure it goes all the way from the T all the way to the S. And the first line I actually want to be yellow. So with my shape selected, back to my color picker tool in the top right, I'm gonna click, hold, drag it down over top of this yellow, unlet go my mouse. It's now loaded in the color picker on the top right. I'm gonna click on that, assign it to my shape, and I want another yellow line. So I'm gonna duplicate this line. Um, and you can do that doing Command J on a Mac or Control J on a PC. I'm gonna drag mine out to about maybe here. And I'm gonna duplicate this one more time, but I want this line to be uh, red. So let's, or sorry, I'm white. I want it to be white. So let's put, uh, white there and it looks pretty good. Um, I'm gonna add two more thin red lines here. So I'm just gonna go back to my shapes, grab my rectangle tool and let's grab uh, a red one here. I'm gonna sit it inside here. Maybe I'll make it a little thinner. make this red just a little thinner I think maybe like that and then I'll duplicate this red line as well I'm gonna pull it down to here perfect and I don't need these colors anymore because I got them so I'm gonna turn those off and then I'm gonna add text one more time because Tim Hortons has a tagline always fresh I'm gonna take that and line this up all the way across the bottom so this is our logo so far looks all right take all this stuff and next thing I'm gonna do is just take this leaf and I put it over top of the O as if it's coming out of the O I was gonna make the um, O red as well but I don't think it it works very well I was also considering um, changing this from red to white like that um, maybe I'll just export verse both versions to see what they look like but uh, I'm gonna keep it red for now just because it pops out a little bit um, go back there and make that red and I will select everything and move them up a little bit here. Maybe like that. So that is my Tim Hortons retro logo. Um, old school font, some old school kind of cool looking lines, add the leaf for the classic logo. Um, and that's it. I'll throw this up on a couple mock-ups so you can see what it looks like. But that is my Tim Hortons remake. Um, if you like the video, uh, you know what to do. Tap, tap, tap that like button. And if you've never seen my videos before and you're new, um, why you subscribe we run a marathon every year and everyone lets me win uh, in the closing seconds to build my ego and that you can be part of that which is very exciting for you uh so thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one